Dr. Rumick, Mr. Hammond ate fish, and Randy said there are five more cases, and they all had fish, too. Yeah, the co-pilot had fish. What did the navigator have? He had fish. All right. Now we know what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane will have fish for dinner. We'll become violently ill in the next half hour. Just how serious is it, Doctor? Extremely serious. It starts with a slight fever, dryness of the throat. As the virus penetrates the red blood cells, the victim becomes dizzy. Because we experience an itching, a rash. From there, the poison goes to work on the central nervous system, causing severe muscle spasms, followed by the inevitable grueling. At this point, the entire digestive system collapses, accompanied by uncontrollable flatulence, until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. Navigator 2, we're in terrible trouble, over. Roger, Elaine, Roger, I read you. This is Steve McCroskey at Chicago Air Control. Back to you in a minute. Hold all takeoffs. I don't want another plane in the air. And the 508 reports, bring it straight in. Yes, sir. Put out a general bulletin to suspend all meal service on flights out of Los Angeles. Tell all dispatchers to remain at the post. It's going to be a long night. How about some coffee, Johnny? No, thanks. I want the weather on every landing field this side of the line, no matter what the size. You understand? Any place, any place where there's a chance to land that plane. Stan, go upstairs to the tower and get a runway diagram. Terry, check down the field for emergency equipment. Chief, we got fog right down to the deck, every place east of the Rockies. There's no possible place they can land. They'll have to come through to Chicago. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. I want the best available man on this. A man who knows that plane inside and out and won't crack under pressure. How about Mr. Rogers? Get me Rex Kramer. 